Hello, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> I'm curious, how many of you out here have smartphones today? Let me see, just by a show of hands, a great many of us have smartphones. Technology has advanced so rapidly. How many of you have iPads or tablets of some sort? Man, I see many of you, many of you. So, how many of you are familiar with QR codes, otherwise known as quick response. I see some of you are. If you're not familiar with it, so I'll let you know, you can often find them in magazines and subway stations, uh, on billboards. There's often a small area with a QR code with a pixelated symbol that you can then take a picture of that will automatically transfer you to a link to a promotion, to a website, or something of the sort. In today's technology, we have a number of different ways to access information that are very different than we did some 50 or 60 years ago, uh, well before smartphones. Accessing information was very different. You could read it in a written form. You could share information by word of mouth. And uh, information would disperse through a number of different means. And in fact, preservation of stories and passing down of stories occurred very often through the written form. And ASL has faced the difficulty of not having a written form for a great many years. So the preservation of sign language uh, that conceptually first came up through film in uh, the 1913 film by George Vedits. George Vedits said that you know, the uh, education, the preservation of sign language had to require film because uh, it, we did not record it in a written form, but that, that w by using the technology of film, we could record and disseminate our language much better. The formula the, that we have for capturing sign language uh, it was through originally reel-to-reel -reel film, then VHS, and then now DVDs. And so all of these forms, uh, these newer forms, are digital in nature, from YouTube to Facebook, and they can be widely disseminated. QR codes could actually be taken advantage of for this purpose. All QR codes could be used to access signed format information. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. So using that quick code brings you to video information that's a much more human connection in American Sign Language in a 3D form that's not linear in the way that written English text is and it's much more connectable to our audience. There is also the added advantage that you can have the written textual information uh, mapped on to uh, uh, having included a QR code that could then take you to a signed version or signed expansion of that information. It would be beneficial for also for international visitors for whom English is not their first language. If there is some t English text information with the QR code, they could be able to click on that and connect then to a version in their own sign language or native language. QR codes actually can have an impact on a number of domains. I'm going to look at three in particular community, education, and business environments. QR codes can be very useful to many of them. Student organizations, for example, fraternities, sororities, uh, the Rainbow Society that we have, are all student organizations that can benefit from this because they have flyers and advertisements that are often in written English. But if you'd like more detailed information, you can simply use your smartphone, access the QR code, and that would bring you to a link giving you more information on the goal of the event, how many tickets, what date the event is for, all in American Sign Language. Easily accessible by using the QR code. Also, if we look at students that are coming here to take courses, and these international students don't have English as a first language. In fact, it might be a third or fourth language. And so that text would not be as accessible. The use of a QR code on a smartphone or, or an iPad could then access signed information that they could see alongside the written text. This would uh, presents a strong bilingual advantage to its users. In fact, large organizations like CSD, RID, the National Association for the Deaf, all of these could extend their reach of their information by the use of QR codes. 
very often, people will not peruse written information with the same depth that they would if they had it in and if accessible via QR code, then somebody could quickly access a signed version and be willing to stay for the duration of the, of the text, much more so than were it simply English text. That's in part because it's a more human connection. This presents an opportunity to disseminate information more widely. Can also be used in uh, tra transportation environments, for example, at a bus station or a subway station. If you need updated information on the schedule for the uh, public transport or uh, frequently asked questions, all could be accessible in American Sign Language using a QR code. So these public spaces could also benefit from having QR codes linking to American Sign Language uh, formats. In the field of education, we can also see benefits. They could be using QR codes to their own benefit. The field of deaf studies and uh, ASL studies, both can use uh, QR codes for a number of different applications. The syllabus is generally in English text, but could also link via QR codes to signed versions of each passage of the syllabus. The same is true of APA state style guides or the various style guides for your discipline. Those papers could also include QR codes that include their thesis statement or, or whatever section they'd like to make accessible in that way. And the references could also be done in APA format, Chicago format, all of these citations could be done in the relevant format in sign language by use of QR codes. Also, uh, various departments, as I'll show you in just a moment, I, I have a graphic I'll be sharing with you shortly, uh, often have scheduled tours that could be done in sign language that talk about their own department, its aims, its goals. And if someone were to come for a, a, a tour that wasn't scheduled and would like access to that, they could use a QR code such as the one I'm about to show you. This comes from the Deaf Studies Department, and each uh, department generally has a bulletin board where they share, share updates about their programs, their graduate studies uh, groups, what they're doing, and I'd like to demonstrate for you what is happening here on this particular flyer. There's actually free QR reader apps out there in abundance. And they're very easy to download. So they look like this. It looks like you're seeing your regular camera view, but you simply hone in on the QR code itself. And there you have it. It links right to the video. Simply snapping a picture of the QR code allows people to independently access this tour information for the department. By taking a picture of that QR code, they can easily access this. Each department uh, could have that and have their own self-guided tour, which is much more uh, uh, visitor-friendly and uh, relatable being a human connection as opposed to just the written English text. This could be a recruitment tool as well. Our recruitment materials could have QR codes for different programs and departments that access immediately to signed versions of their information. In fact, there's one person who's working on their master's thesis on, and looking at museum uh, visitors and you know, use of QR codes for those museum uh, tours. Very often they have uh, English text there uh, nearby the piece of art or uh, exhibit. But uh, self-guided tours are often done and through wearing uh, headphones. But these QR codes would be a very efficient way of being able to use your smartphone to access signed versions of this information. So in looking at the domain of business, many people are small business owners and use their business cards that 
typically have a very limited field of information, contact information, your video phone number perhaps. But if that business card or advertisement has that QR code, you may not have time to explain to every potential person that you hand out your card to what your business is about and what you do. But if it has a QR code, they can link directly to a signed video where you tell them about your business and the opportunities that you, that uh, your uh, field or business presents. If we look at some of the deaf expos, conferences, and job fairs out there, very oftentimes there's, they're littered with booths all over the place, and not everyone will have time to go through all of the booths, and there may be too many people surrounding a booth, so you can't have access to that booth at the moment that you're walking by. But if that booth had a QR code on their brochure or their banner, then you could simply take that and at your convenience follow the QR code link to signed information that the booth was there to provide. QR codes present a wonderful opportunity for access for us. ASL not being a written language should not uh, limit us because even somebody whose strength is not uh, in uh, written English as a first language could still have access to all of this. We should take advantage of this burgeoning technology of, of QR codes to make all of our information more accessible and more widely dispersed in our native language of ASL. I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to present.